All right, so um, this has been one I've been meaning to do for a little while, and finals are finally over, so I can you know do something. Um, we run this program. You can put in numbers and stuff, and it'll give you hints. So this hint is put a lot of one letter into uh, to overflow me. Sure, why not? Um, let's try that. Uh, oh, okay. <sighs> All right, so this looks like a classic overflow. It tried to jump to 61616161, which is lowercase a. So now we want to find out where is the offset in my input that it's trying to jump to. So easiest way I always do that with is uh, a, 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 b, 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 c, 154, 154, 154, 154, 154, 154, 154, 154, 154. That's enough. Okay. So it jumped to 686868. And um, uh, if we open up ASCII table, a uh, nice little website. It's got, ooh, okay, um, ASCII charts and whatnot. We can look it up. So, what was that? 68? 68H. Okay. Um, I'm going to minimize that because that'll be useful later. So that means, well, first of all, one thing that's always very handy when doing this kind of stuff, open up a blank notepad. So one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three oops C four one two three 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 four okay so A B C D E F G H right there so those guys are the ones that let us control what we want to where we want to go um, now we want to know where we want to go. Uh, so I'm going to open this up with Ollie Debug. Um, I built a little thing in so I can just right click on EXEs and DLLs and such and open it in Ollie. But otherwise, you know, just open up Ollie and, uh, or drag and drop or however you want to do it. But open the program and Ollie Debug. So I'm going to bring Ollie over here. Boom. There you go. Uh, all right, um, now one thing we want to do is set a breakpoint on right before where it crashes, which is kind of hard to find, but it gives you an offset and everything, and I know where it's at. It's right there. So how this is going to work, I'll explain it in a couple seconds, and you'll see in a couple seconds, which is why I'm making this video. Um, well, let's just run it. Okay. Sorry, by accident I hit the F9 button, which is also the stop uh, recording your screen button. Um, it's also the start the but uh, start the program in Ollie. That's why the program, whatever. Okay, so we're gonna put in a bunch of crap. Actually, we want to put in the right amount of crap. Let's do this. Copy, paste, boom. Okay. All right, so I, I use another gets, you know, just so you'd have to in an en hit another enter before, uh, you know, you kill the program. So let's see what's going on here. Let's get Ollie in proportion. So everything's going fine. We just uh, killed that. We left this the stack frame. Um, now we're about to return. How does uh, when a program when a function is done, it needs to know where to go after it's done. Um, that value is stored on the stack. Stack and the, the stack and Ollie is down here. Um, variables that are used real quick, uh, you know, like user input, that kind of stuff, is also typically stored on the stack. Sometimes, you know, smarter programmers programmers use a heap, um, but you can heap overflow and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to get into that. So for right now, our input starts right there, as you can see. Six one six one six one. Oh, this um, stack is everything's backwards. So like six one six one six one zero. That's before our A is even started. Wait, is it? One two. That doesn't look like it is. Did I put in? 
I could have swore I put in four A's. I don't know where the first one went. It may have been clobbered um, by the stack somewhere later. Okay, whatever. So there's our A's, B's, C's, D's, E's, F, G's, H's. Now right now, the way the return function in uh, I386 assembly works, it grabs the first thing, pops off the stack, and goes there. So right now it's going to try and go to 6868-6868, which isn't really anywhere, um, and Ali flips out. Yay! What we want to do is we would rather have it go um, just for the sake of ease of code reading, let's make it go to this line because that line kind of starts in the middle. Um, so we want to make it go to 22FF64. Now in order to do that, we're going to have to do input it backwards. So we're going to have to put it in 64FF22. And then the last thing, we're just going to leave zero because if you notice, we got a, a line of zeros after us, which is pretty fortunate because there's no way to input zero. You're going to notice that's something kind of hard in, you know, exploiting buffer overflows and such. There's a lot of trickery to get around it. Like if you need to push a value that has zero in it somewhere, what you're going to have to do is like, you know, use uh, a register real quick. You can push like um, the number you want, but add one to each, each uh, place and then subtract one from each place. And that way you never have to actually use the number zero. It's uh, it's kind of tricky. I'm not going to get into all that. I'm just you know trying to show exactly what goes on behind buffer overflows. We're not going to get into like exploiting them and all that fun stuff. Okay, so where are we? Oh, we want to go to 64FF2200. Um, so let's look up those values. 64, boom, D. FF, uh, no good way to put FF in. One way we can do it though is by holding the Alt button and then hitting uh, 255 on the uh, num key on the you know the right hand side of your keyboard. Um, FF is hex for uh, 255. And if you don't believe me, here comes calculator. So we type in FF, we hit decimal 255. Sweet. Okay, so let's try this. We want, instead of this, we want, um, we want to get rid of that because we're going to have to type it in. So let's just do this. Go to Ollie, restart it. Yep. Okay, start. Move you over here. Uh, we want this junk. Boom. All right, now we want D. Um, I'm holding the Alt button right now and hitting 255. Now, you can't really see that, obviously. It's not a really valid character. Whatever. Uh, 22. Um, double quote. So, just type in double quote. And off we go. Now, let's see what happened in Ollie. Okay. So, everything looks cool. 22, FF64, which is what we wanted. Let's see when we jump there. Um, you know, that's code, but it's not our code. It's not real code. It's just 6262, which is B, C, D. Um, I think I mentioned this in my other videos, but just, you know, to reiterate, there's no difference between code and text. So literally, right now, this, this is the text that we put in. I mean, if I highlight this and say edit, you can see... This is this is what we typed in. This is our password, quote unquote, of sorts. Um, but in exploiting this, we're you know code and strings and pictures and data and any any sort of user input, it's it's all just data. So we're actually running data right now. Um, I stopped it before it went ahead and run it because you know it's, it's going to start flipping out. This isn't like, I mean it's valid, but it's going to flip out. So. What we want to do instead is, because um, I, I don't want to get into all the uh, the semantics of exploiting um, I386 opcode set and all that kind of fun stuff. So we're just going to call exit process. So normally when you typed in a whole bunch of crap and tried to run this, it flipped out. Like if I try and run this right now, dang, I hit F9 again, sorry. 
if I try and run this right now, yeah, it, array bounds exceeded. It starts flipping out. This isn't, you know, this isn't valid code right here. It's not happy. So, um, let's assemble here. Cool thing about Ali is that it's also an assembler. We can just type stuff in. Let's call kernel 32.exit process. Cool. Now let's grab that because all we want is that hex right there. Um, let's paste it somewhere. Cool. Now this is this is the only actual stuff we want. Okay, so we want to convert that to keystrokes. Um, simple way to do that. We could do this. Oh, no, we can't do that. <laughs> we have to do it one at a time. I'm an idiot. Okay, so that is 232. So hold Alt, 232. Well, that's a funky character. 71, oops, is 113. 113. Uh, doesn't seem right. 113. I hope it's right. I guess it's right. Does the ASCII chart say it's right? 71. I guess it seems right. Q. Okay. I buy it. Um, CE 206. There's a cool character. 5E 94. Another fun character. 7C. I bet this one's weird. 124. That's oh, probably not. Uh, could have been worse. Okay, so this is what we want to put at the front of our junk. Um, because it's five, we're gonna have to replace five. One, it's five characters. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. So we want to replace one, two, three, four, five. Boom. Okay. So now this is our. Um, I guess it would be called payload of sorts. It's a pretty simple payload, but you know, you make do. So let's try this business again. Run the program. Um, plop. And then we want, what was it? D, hold alt, hit 255, let go of alt, and double quote. Okay, let's see what happens. Boom. No, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? 7C. Oh, because we jumped into the middle of our code. One, two, three. So we have to put our jump, we got to put three characters in front of our thingy. One, two, three. Okay, and we gotta get rid of three on this side. One, two, three. That's because we jumped um, not to like exactly where our buffer starts. We started at a line below. And that's my fault, and again, I'm an idiot. So, let's start pressing buttons. Pasting this in here. Um, D, Alt-255, double quote. See what happens. Still didn't work. Why didn't you work? Um, E8. No, it did work. Didn't it work? Seven one C E. 5e7c. Yeah. That works fine, right? Oh no, it jumped to the 7 1. Oh, okay, I'm off by one. Off by one error. Not too bad. We're making progress. It's okay. Let's put the A back there. Let's get rid of one of the C's. Let's try this again. Sorry about this. I, you know, I'm trying to make this nice and simple. But uh, in reality, this is this is a pretty complex 
thing we're doing here. Okay, so D, Alt 255, quote, go. There we go. Um, now see the next, I haven't run it yet, but the next line of code it's going to try and run is call exit process from the kernel, from Windows kernel. And when I do that, it exited. Cool. Now let's try it outside of Ollie. Let's minimize, 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 open. Okay. Paste, because I still have all my stuff. D. Uh, oh, Alt-255, quote. Now when I hit enter, it should go away and we shouldn't get any error message. Oh, yeah. Now, just to show in perspective what would happen if we do that exact same thing without our code in the beginning, the, uh, the actual program code, um, let's do a... a, a D -D -D -D. And then D two fifty five quote. Okay, so we're still this this thing right here is telling the computer where to go after it's done. So we're still going back and starting to execute this junk. I think we execute right there at the B's. But that's not real code. You know that that's we're trying to execute a string and the computer gets real confused. So we're gonna do that and it's probably yeah, there we go. It's probably gonna say something about array out of bounds. Do, 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 data. Error, blah blah blah. Uh, it doesn't really give us. I don't feel like reading through the the uh, the dump, but it is not happy. So um, yeah, there's a a real simple buffer overflow. Um, I should have made the uh, the buffer a little bit bigger to give you guys um bigger room to play around with but this at least gets your feet wet in uh, understanding what's going on and uh, you know all this junk right here we could fill with some other code it's real real teeny amount of space especially considering um, when you can't use zeros and you have to do special tricks that take up all sorts of other space there's not a whole lot you could do with this um, but yeah I guess that's it Peace.